Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. Today we're going to take a look at the newest release of Garuda Linux. This one came out on the 5th of March, which is about four days ago. It's got some updated items in it that I really wanted to go over. The first thing you're going to notice right off the bat is you've got a little different look to the dock and you've got a little different look up here to the top bar. One of the reasons is, is they have officially pulled Latte out of everything for the simple fact that those of you out there in the know know that Latte Dock is now unsupported. There's not a developer so far that I know of that's taken it over. You've got a dock down here now that is more solid and stable. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't have the icons jumping off the screen or have to go into settings to adjust that because this is based on just a regular KDE panel. So you get that dock down here. And then, of course, up top, you get the KDE top bar as well. Now, one thing I do want to point out is we'll go ahead and maximize that. You still get your global menu up here. We'll go ahead and minimize that back down. And this is your Garuda Linux Raptor. It's a rolling release, fast, friendly, performance-focused OS. Garuda is loaded with amazing tools and supported by the community. But I love this Garuda welcome screen. It gives you so many different things you can do right off the bat. You've got your Garuda Assistant right here. If you open it up, it gives you a lot of different options here. You've got maintenance, uh, BTRFS and snapper, system component settings, system specs, other diagnostics. But I suggest if you do download Garuda and take a look at it, definitely go through and look at all the tools it comes with. If you're somebody that's using like an MX that comes with MX tools, you will truly love the time that Garuda has put into their assistant. And of course, it makes your job a lot easier when working on your system. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this real quick. And you've got Garuda Gamer, Garuda Settings Manager, Network, Boot Options, Boot Repair, and then, of course, a lot of different things you can do down here. Now, what I do like is after you do install Garuda, you'll install it. When you come back, it'll update, and it also gives you a menu where you can go in and install a bunch of your favorite applications right off the bat. You can go through and choose them all at once, and once you're done with that, click Apply, and it'll install them all at once, whether that be base applications or maybe some gaming emulators, whatever that might be. Now, one thing I do want to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump down here to settings real quick, and we're going to come all the way to the bottoms, and I want to go to about because I want to verify that we are using it's KDE Plasma 5.27.2, the most recent, and then your kernel version is 6.2.2-Zen1-1-Zen. So you've got the Zen kernel. Garuda, in my opinion, just keeps getting better. And honestly, one of the first things I always did anyway was get rid of the Latte dock for one simple reason. Let's go down here to System Monitor, and let's open that up real quick. And right here, it's got your overview. Let's let that load and give us some information here. And you're running about 1.2 gigabytes. Now, this would have been a little bit heavier in a virtual machine with Latte dock for one simple reason, because Latte dock was using anywhere from 350 megabytes up to a half a gig of resources just to be running in the background. One of the first things I always did was get rid of Latte Dock and just go back to my standard default panel at the bottom. That's me. Now, with them using just the KDE panels, I may actually install this on my Librem laptop and just leave it and use it for a while and see what my workflow is like as compared to just the default panel. I wanted to show you that real quick. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And one of the things I really love is their new default wallpaper. I love that look. It looks mean. It looks, I, I don't know. I just like it. I don't know why. And their splash screen. They've made some changes in their splash screen. It looks a little bit more up to date. I think if you download it and go through everything, you will like it as well. And then, of course, you can always come up here and click to open up all of your applications whether it be your development, your graphics, your internet, uh, multimedia, office, settings, system, utilities. And I did a video not too long ago that shows you if you don't like these icons right here, you can change those. It's rather easy. It's rather simple. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, what I do want to find out, do we have other wallpapers besides this new default, or do we still have all the other ones that are the same? We got some animated. Looks like we got a lot of the regular Garuda wallpapers because I really do like this one. Uh, that was their old one right there that it came with out of the box. And it looks like you're going to have the standard wallpapers. Now, once you do install it, it does give you an option when you're installing all your extra software that you want to use. If you want to download additional Garuda wallpapers, you can. It makes things really simple. And then you get another batch of beautiful-looking wallpapers. And then if we come up here, you've got your hidden icons up here. 
uh, night color control, Bluetooth, lock key status, things like that. I do want to say it looks like Garuda has done a lot of work on this release just to kind of, you know, tighten things up a little bit now that Latte Doc's not available. And Garuda is just, I mean, when you're looking at an Arch-based distribution and you want something that's easy to use, you want something that makes your job easy without a lot of flack. I get a lot of people that want to install Arch and they just have a problem with it sometime. At least that's what they tell me in the comments. If you disagree with me, hey, put that in the comments below. Now, it does come with Fire Dragon web browser. You can get the regular Firefox if you want to. And it comes with Dark Reader out of the box. Let's go ahead and maximize this. And we'll go ahead and close the Dark Reader notification. And then you got your new tab right here. And then if you go down here and you wanted to do a search, let's just put in Ebo Central 1L. You're going to have the Cirex search results. I love Cirex. It's very customizable. And there are a lot of things that you can do on it that you can't do with search engines. Now, you do get errors every now and then. Like, engines cannot retrieve results from Google, suspended too many requests. You can adjust this. Here it's got general images, videos, news, maps, music, science. Go over here to preferences. We're going to go ahead and pull preferences up. We want to go over here to search engines. Now, you can pick whatever search engines you want to use. If you want to leave Bing in there, you can. Uh, I usually get rid of Bing, I get rid of Google, I'll leave DuckDuckGo up, uh, Neva I'll leave up, Quant, uh, those look pretty good to me, I'll just stick with those, and then you want to scroll down and make sure you hit save. Let's go ahead and hit save, and it saved them, if you want to go back home you can, just click on home, and then you can come back over here, do your search for eBuzz Central, and pull it up, and you shouldn't have that red notification anymore, and you don't. So you're not pulling anything from Google, you don't have Google timing out on you. Now, another thing you might notice is when you go to images in Fire Dragon, it's going to take a while to upload images. Go over here to preferences. Now, what you'll want to do is go to user interface, privacy, right here. Image proxy is enabled. Go ahead and disable that and save. Now, go back home. Now, when you do a search for eBuzz Central, and open that up and click on images. Your images should load rather quicker than before. These are going to be slower than, let's say, a Google or a DuckDuckGo. But once they get loaded, you'll be able to scroll through them and you'll be able to see your images without an issue. You'll just have to go in and change that proxy setting. Now, what I do want to see is if I go back here, we got another error showing on Google. Now, I did change that. Let's go make sure that I saved it. Engines. Uh, let's go ahead and check that again and click save. Now go back home. Let's try that one more time. And there's no red flag, so that fixed. I don't know what I made a mistake with prior to that, but we got it fixed. So that's Fire Dragon. If you get a chance to download Garuda and take a look at it, one of the things I love is Fire Dragon. And I'm using it inside a virtual machine. It's a little sluggish right now, but once you get it installed on your main system, you don't have an issue with that at all. And that's pretty much a quick look. Garuda, one of my favorite Arch distros, one of my best daily drivers I've ever had, over Manjaro any day of the week. And it's also good for gaming. Um, if you guys would like me to see me do a video about Garuda in gaming, I would want to do it with Linux titles that you can get off their software center, and then, of course, maybe some emulation, and then, of course, step up to Steam. I want to show you all three realms of gaming that you can do on it. If that's something you'd like to see, please drop that in the comments below. Zip on over to Garuda and download it. I'll be sure to click that link in the description below. If you do download it and you do give it a test drive with this new release, please come back and let me know how everything goes. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month, but that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, 
and I will see you in the next video.